I, I noticed that in Canadian graffiti, there's not a lot of like schooling. Like there's not like, oh, I was raised up by this guy, I was raised up by that. Primarily because it's a young thing here. You know, graffiti has, you know, been around since the late 60s in New York and in, in you know, the States. We're here, it's still super young. All our old school guys, like they kept the secrets to themselves. Yeah. Their whole thing was like, no, learn it for yourself. And that's kind of like how Toronto graffiti, even Canadian graffiti has been. It's very selfish with style and with knowledge. Um, but then when you go to the States, they like hand down information. Yeah, there, there's regionality, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, Philly has Philly hands for a reason. New York styles exist for a reason. It's like that came from this bro, that came from this dude. That that happened, you know, there, but now kids sort of try and pull that shit off elsewhere because it's so available on the internet. But without having somebody give that to you, you don't really understand it. It's changed. People used to have to paint before, you used to have to work hard, you had to get up. Now it's like everything I do, I put on Instagram, or I got these friends and we're all Instagram buddies and they fucking pump this shit. And it's like, you know, I would have never known who the fuck you were if it wasn't for your cell phone. I know a day, I know a time. So they bring the trains in, park them here, just straight ahead. Then the company comes, picks them up, empties them and puts them where we just were. It's like clockwork, like they're planning on picking the cars up. So the cars will be gone tomorrow. All the ones that are, we just walked past, those will be gone tomorrow. So. If I don't get it tonight, then sayonara. I love trains, but I don't know. I think doing throw-ups is like my favorite thing in the world. Like doing fill-ins. Like catching catching fill-ins like on like back tracks like as the sun's coming up like in the summertime is fucking awesome. Just being in the train yard for me is fun too. Yeah, like trains are probably the best, but yeah, I don't know. I like painting graffiti. I just like painting. So like I don't give. A, I've always to say to these guys too. Like if it's got wheels, I'm a paint the fucker. Like if it's gonna move, I'm in. Like you know, it's just whatever. Even if it's just fill-ins or tags on the trains, like going to the tanker yard and rinsing out fucking 300 tags, like that's fucking awesome. Like, yeah, I catch them all the time. You know, we're going and painting one auto rack. That's awesome too. We're going to do a highway hit. You know, it's all fun. Like, I'm not going to fucking be a snob about it. Being from the suburbs, like, you're not exposed to the same things as like the city. So when, uh, when we would go downtown at 13, 14 years old, <laughs> we're just like letting loose on the city and fucking tagging on top of shit, clipping tags, like just going wild. And uh, you learn quickly <laughs> <laughs> that you're doing things wrong. <laughs> I met Globe in a, a laneway in Toronto during a graffiti event, like in the, the like mid '90s, and uh, there I was there with like my my other crew, like my other group of friends that I've been painting with for a little while. And this dude shows up, and he's like the atypical like suburban like Eminem looking white boy, and uh, he climbed up onto the legal wall we were painting and tagged all of the windows that were facing <laughs> into the office, and. Uh, the owner of the building like went fucking berserk and called the police on us and I ended up getting tossed in a cop car and like almost arrested. Well, he, he just, he had already left. Like he was like, you're a peace guy and like walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like we ended up getting basically arrested because of, and I was like, I fucking hate that dude. When I see him, I'm gonna kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't even think that happened. I thought I was doing a huge burner on the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are paying legal laws, like uh, fuck the legal law, you know. <laughs> but no, I was just like a really excited kid, and I that was like the first graph jam I ever went to, and it was like graffiti overload for me. I don't feel the same way as I used to when I was a kid. 
like there's a little bit of adrenaline, but because graffiti is so regimented toward, like for me, like, you know, I'm like, okay, I have my way in. Like It's such like a, a planned thing in my head. You know, there's the spontaneity really is usually not there. It's like, I'm going to the train yard. I'm gonna take these colors. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Like the payoff is being out and like relaxing for that, you know, two hours or whatever for my regular fucking like life. But also the payout is like when somebody in fucking you know, Texas says, hey, I saw your panel. Some dude in Chicago is like, hey, check this out. You painted this. And it's like, oh, that's cool. You know, like you're getting the recognition, but like, I don't feel the same way. Like, I don't feel the need to fucking like, you know, go oh, vandalize. Why do we do this shit? I don't even know, man. Uh -huh. Especially this long. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just a part of your life. Yeah. Start fucking knitting or something. <laughs> There's dudes that I paint with that have been painting since 1990, 1988 or whatever, you know, and it's like, wow, this dude has really been around to, to witness the, the changes. But now that I've been around for over 20 years, it's like, wow, like it's, it, it's sort of like cyclical, like you see things happening and you see things pick up and fall down and it's like, it's strange. I painted a piece that says, rest in peace, domestic paint. <coughs> and I love old school paint, I love hoarding paint, collecting, I like, I loved shoplifting. It was like my thing. I liked stealing spray paint. So when the caps changed and like paint was changing, I was like, man, shit is really going to be different. Like I lived in the Krylon era. We always used Krylon, Krylon, Krylon and Rust-Oleum. And then it was like, Krylon sucks. You got to use fucking straight Rust-Oleum. But for us, it was then Trem clad because Rusto was gone. So like you're watching it like change in front of you and you know, I'm not going to be that old man that's like <laughs> Fuck, I was just like, oh, okay, like, okay, get an adapter, do this, do this, do this And like, you know, now things are easier for us because it's like, well, fuck, I can just go to the store and pick any one of these fucking colors that I need or want Where before it was like, here's your color mix, palette And the mix paint Yeah, man, like, here's your okay. fucking this, here's your that, and that, that was it You got I it I remember going on, on uh, these internet forums and finding different color charts that you can mix paint so you take your old paint and you mix them together and you make your own colors and that's kind of like what we did yeah and uh that was really cool like way of growing up but you know you just adapt man if i can go if i want like a muddy green i can go to the store and buy muddy green i don't have to worry yeah. about the whole process and you know it's made it faster yeah more efficient throw a fat cap on there get fucking my shit done quicker because we're from the suburbs, like me, for me at least, I, I lived in Automaker City, there was freight trains there, and I lived in the burbs, man. Like, what's the point of fucking bombing in the suburbs? Like, what, are you gonna go be a hardcore street bomber on one little fucking square block of like, you know, I did a field on my Taco Bell. There was freight trains there, and we were skateboarding right near the rail line, so we were seeing these trains coming in and out, and occasionally, in the 90s, you would see a little bit of graffiti. Like, you'd catch like one panel a day, and it was always good. It was never any bullshit. You were like, whoa, there's graffiti here. So to me, I was like, I don't live in downtown Toronto. I live in the fucking suburbs. I'm gonna paint the trains. And then it just snowballed way out of control as I started getting older and realizing how far it was reaching and that there was this whole other subgenre of graffiti that was just train culture. I fucking just dove right into it. And then I was like, I, I, I don't give a shit about what I paint, I just like painting. So I painted the GO train lines into the city and then I started trickling into the streets and shit. But for me, it's just always been paint everything, like do everything. I, and that's the one thing about GH dudes, everybody can do everything. You know, there's dudes that, that, that want to bomb, then they can bomb, but they can also go and pull off decent panels. Like I don't want our boys to just be like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. Because when we came up, we were writers. Writers meant you did everything. Yeah, the whole GH thing was the Golden Horseshoe, so it wasn't even meant to be like a city thing. It was kind of like the outskirts of Lake Ontario. Yeah, the 905 area code is considered the Golden Horseshoe. Yeah. After some time, um, when the original core group of GH guys started like you know falling off and not painting anymore, him and I had been painting a lot, and he was just like, yo, I want to redo GH, but like do it differently. When I got put down, I, I was one of the later guys that got put down in the original one, and uh, I was just so hyped to be down. I did whole cars, did all these things, and then all these guys fell off. So it was kind of like this thing I was proud of is like dying out. I thought about it, and I made a list of all the guys that were the most badass dudes in the city that were doing dope shit. 
that were up and coming and not even up and coming but that were like we were all still pretty young <clears throat> when we started uh gh like when we revamped it i called these guys and i was like listen i have this idea would you guys be down like before i make it into a big thing i want to make sure that you guys are interested in the idea worthless was down and motel was down all these guys were like so stoked on the idea that when we revamped it it was like nothing could stop us and it was like family again you know and it was a it was a really really cool thing for a long time things were changing and i didn't want to not be a part of something that was like not super tight like i had dealt with like just soft ass dudes in my own crew doing stupid shit and me having to fucking be out there by myself, like dealing with it. And I was like, no man, like if we're gonna do it, like super, super tight knit and like keep it like, like straight up family because I felt like a lot of the dudes in the city were acting like idiots and like they would be bad mouthing each other, you know, like their own crewmates. They'd be like, oh fuck this dude, fuck there that was, dude. There was no crew. That no. Was a family there's no crew at all no and it's important you know I think like if you're gonna come up like come up with the dudes you come up with and stay with them and like you know some people think that loyalty is a vice but like that's that's, that's bullshit man like who the fuck are you gonna trust man like the dudes you fucking spent all this time in the streets with you've been fucking punched kicked fucking chased arrested with like no soft man bullshit and I, I stick to it you know I don't, I don't want to see that and I, I won't be a part of it if it's fucking like that I'll, I'll kick everybody out or fucking fight or do whatever I have to because it's like not gonna happen. It was it was GH and like KPS. The two crews were like all friends. So when we would go out and mob around, there'd be like 30 of us. Like it was like a crazy mob of just friends. Partying like, and... Like that was like the peak. There's just so much good stuff going on. Like we were doing these huge productions. We we're still developing our style, so it was still fun. There's just so many good times. We've had an annual Christmas party ever since like we started and we got, we got one tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, all the guys are coming out and uh, we're gonna have a big Christmas party and stuff. So that, that's been ignorant. going on for X amount of years, right? We, we really put in a lot of work to stay together. And uh, even though it's tough now, because we all, like some of us are married, some of us have kids, some of us, uh, you know. Are around. Are around. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, as long as uh, we keep it thorough and we're like honest with ourselves, that's the thing, we don't bullshit each other. So we don't like lead each other on or like, like a lot of these other crews, they just like bash each other behind their backs and all this stuff. And like, we don't do that, we, we keep it tight so that's what we try to teach with we got the new guys that are in the crew now we try to teach them too that this isn't like some flip-flop crew no soft bullshit we, we were really fortunate too like as like we got on later in life like i started meeting more americans and things like that and painting in the states and dudes are coming through here I'm getting put down with wh and seeing how this crew that's been around since 1993 operates and seeing you know how they'll like take care of in-house problems or how they expect you know their dudes to act really helped us in the sense that we started taking in the younger dudes and just being like, you know, we're going to lead by example. Like, I don't, I shouldn't have to tell you not to do something or to do something, you know, but just having them around us and being with us to see like, oh, okay, like this is how these dudes are going to, this is how we should act with each other. We're, we're a family, we're brothers, we should get ignorant, and, you know, have a good time and they, they get it. And like, it, it, it brings in new energy to us. We're like, we might be getting old and fucking lazy. I got to paint more because these young dudes are around. And, you know, I want to hang out and act like a shithead with them. So it's like, and it's cool. Destroying us. Oh, yeah. The okay. pain is so heavy. issues you know as all crews do there's always you know everyone's got their own opinion like to have that many people uh, associating together uh, you know it, you're you're gonna be next to impossible to find like everyone that just gets along all the time you know if you have freight etiquette like we really base off trains so if like you got freight etiquette and I can have a beer with you then that's a good start yeah and then from then on it depends and then if another thing is if you fuck up and we schooled you on something 
or we try to teach you something, how you act from that on is a big factor. So did you take that in and build from it or are you just talking shit back? You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of fucking older writers bash the internet, they bash how easy the, the young guys have it and this, that, and the other. To those writers, fucking adapt. Yep. Like, you know, it's not the fucking 90s. There is the internet. <laughs> Adjust to it, right? <laughs> so if you're gonna be like, you know, all, all fucking hate in the world <laughs> because these guys have it easy, then, you know, you're gonna just, you're just gonna fall behind, right? Get out of your b-boy stance and yeah. realize that. <laughs> is, it, is it easier now than it was? Yeah. Did we have to walk the tracks to see the new pieces? Did we have to fucking take transit all through the city just to get to the one wall that was the legal wall in the city? Like, yeah, that's what we had to do. We had to put in that work. Now they can just Google it and search it and fucking find all the spots, you know? But, yeah. or go on Instagram and see all the latest paintings. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if, if they don't realize how easy they have it, then it is good to, remem to remind them so that they can appreciate, you know? My but the, only... but the real dudes like they go out like our crew the young guys yeah, yeah. they go out and they put in numbers they put in work they're putting time in the yards they're banging out panels after panels after panels and you know what their panels are popping up online on other people like they're yeah. benching it they're not posting their own shit yeah yeah that, well that's that's the one downfall well there's a bunch of different downfalls but like the regionality died with things like Instagram because. Now you have kids studying styles and shit that they were not <coughs> exposed to, where before you might not get to see those fucking Philly wickets or whatever that someone's just going out and posting. So then people try it and use it and they bastardize it or whatever. I get it. Like, that shit's going to happen regardless. You know, kids trying to pull off European-looking graffiti in North America, whatever. Like, cool. That's just how it goes sometimes. But, you know, you have, like, false kings and false prophets. People are, li li like, living lives that technically don't exist because they've created this whole false persona through the internet. And that's a huge downfall, but that's just not in graffiti, that's just in life in general right now, as people are, are in, you know, down their luck or whatever, and they can create this false persona where, you know, graffiti has always been that way, because it's an, ex it's an inclusive culture, like any dork, like him and I listened to completely different music. <coughs> we hated each other when we met each other, but we painted so much graffiti that eventually we just like fucking became friends because of graffiti. We might have the complete different standpoint on everything, but graffiti brought us together. So that's what's cool about it, you know, and people will take that cool thing. They want that cool thing and they fake it, you know, and then they, they try and get that on the internet and it's just like this weird thing. So it's kind of like a, a fucking double-edged sword where you can use it to promote your business and promote yourself or whatever, or you can fucking use it to promote your fake life. It's just, it's fucked up. It's, it's, it's weird. Like you have people that are just taking photos of graffiti now that are getting famous on the internet. And it's like, then they did, there's like this weird subgenre of that. And it's like, you know, there was the benching culture, which always existed through graffiti and before graffiti. And then it sort of transcended into like urbex culture and then this culture. It's fucking strange. Like, it's just really... I, I really like, with the whole internet thing, like, if you don't think the police are following you, if you don't think that they have fake accounts following you, then like, if, if a 14-year-old if a kid can find out your, your page, then they can too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta be careful with that shit. But other than that, like, you know, like having an Instagram page is not important to me. Yeah, like, and, and you, you erase yours all the time. You'll be like, oh, got one, don't have one. Oh, I don't have it. Yeah. Like I took the entire summer off mine. Like when mine was hacked and, and it was fucking gone for a while, it was awesome, you know, but it also is a, an excellent tool for me to market products. So it's like, oh fuck, I need to, you know, make a little bit of money, I got some bills to pay. I can fucking run a sale on Instagram or you can put your business up there. It, it's just, it's a, it, I, I don't feel any type of way. Like I don't hate the younger writers because it's easier, whatever. Like it's just, it is what it is. Times have fucking changed for everything. If you're not quick on your feet, you're fucking dead. So it's like, that's just how it's going to be, man. Adapt. Like, yeah, I think, I think that's why we're still relevant because we did adapt, you know? So, you know, I'll have Instagram for a bit, you know, get a bunch of followers and then, 
I'll just delete it. Somebody will start a rumor about him having crabs. He's got to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, go. the VD comes back and it's just like, geez. <laughs> No, it's, it's definitely a, a dual life. Like, I feel like, you know, like Bruce Wayne and Batman kind of thing. <laughs> but, but no, it's, it's definitely, um, it's really, really hard to balance the two. Because I'm such a personality outside of graph. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very social. So it's like, I got to be really careful on how I mix the two without putting myself at jeopardy, right? So like, graffiti's fun and all, but life's way more important to me. So like, all my priorities, and like, you know, I don't have a backup plan. I don't have like, help. So like, one small mistake could set me back for years on, on like, my life goals, you know? So, you know, so it, it, it's really tough to really, um, the issues, all the major issues I've had in my life have kind of been kind of based off graffiti. <laughs> so broken relationships, um, you know, you go to the yard too much, like, you know, it, it, it always comes, it always goes for full circle. But then at the end of it all, graffiti's also been the thing that's saved me from the stress. It's the, it's the thing that got me through hard times. And my friends, like honestly, if it wasn't for uh, graffiti, the people that I have around me wouldn't be there, so. It's had a negative impact on my life sometimes, but it's mostly like the whole, like, like you're saying the Bruce Wayne thing where I have my professional and my personal life and those closest to me know that I write. Um, you know, I try to keep them very divided just based on the fact that I do have a career that I, you know, I don't want to fuck up, and I think so, you know, I've, I've invested a lot of time into, you know, so it, it, it's, it can definitely fuck your life up. Like you need to find the balance. Like the streets are always going to be there for you. Graffiti's not going anywhere if you choose to, to chill, and still hang out with your boys. Like that's the important thing for me is like st seeing my friends and seeing my crewmates and stuff like that. I might not be as active as I used to be, but like I'm still active within the community and like with my crew and stuff like that. So. It's fucking strange. It's it, it ruins a lot of shit for people. Like if dudes that can't find the balance, you, you see them start to slide off this fucking weird edge because they're they have some goal in mind that they fucking have to get. And like you see these dudes that are so hungry, and it's like, man, you know, if you were There's to put no prize, you no, know, there is no prize, There's no like you know? goal. And That's a lot of we try to yeah, but a lot of writers that we know too, and even with ourselves, like we're successful in our own careers because. We understand work ethic because to be successful in graffiti, you fucking have to work at it. You don't just fucking, you know, you're not just handed some, some key to the city. Like, mm. it's, it's important. Like, you know, so when you apply that mentality to regular work shit, you know, you're usually fucking, you know, top of your, your fucking field or whatever. So it's important that dudes like realize to fucking do both. Like, I think one of the major things that we do teach the younger guys is that, you know, get your life together. So what they actually, we don't just teach them like, yo, have some style, yo, paint panels. We're telling them like, yo, get a job, yo, work for what you got. Fucking having a house is something to be proud of. Having a family is something to be proud of. Yeah. Like just, you know, if your mom needs help at home, go help her. Don't go, you know, don't you, be, don't be a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. And, you can bang um, in the streets. You can be that your name can ring out as loud as fuck. And you can still be like a, a regular person and, and have a fucking job and shit. You know, some people just, they put all of their effort into graffiti and that's totally fine. I am always, you know, very fucking, you know, grateful for the, my friends that do that. Like the, those dudes need to exist, but like, you know, you can be a fucking writer and, and be a savage, but also be a really good person and fucking hold your shit together. You know, I, I, I think I can say that about myself. Like I thought I was going to be pretty ruthless. And then as I got older, 
I realized how much I have to offer to society. So like, I never thought I would run a youth center. I never thought that I would be a good parent. I never thought that, you know, I would care so much about like the people in my community. Um, I just had no end goal at a younger age. And then, uh, and now it's like, these are the most important things to me. So, you know, like being a good person to me is important. But then, you know, if somebody steps on your toes, like you can be, you can still go knock them in the Yeah, fuck it. Out, you right? know, I can be the nicest dude in the world. would be the biggest fucking son of a bitch you ever met in your life. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I think that's a good and bad thing about graffiti because it's an inclusive culture. Like come one, come all, you know, and that's cool. But then it gets to a point where you can act tough as fuck till you get punched out in an airport. Pretty much, right? <laughs> you know, if you're a dick, you're a dick. Yeah, yeah. You can act. You can yeah. act hard as fuck until the beef pops off and you start threatening to call the police on me. You know, and like, yeah. you know, that but. shit happens. You know, and it's like, just be honest to yourself. In you know, don't don't think don't, you're gonna get something out of graffiti that you're 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 not gonna find. Just do graffiti because it's fun and you like hanging out with your boys, you know? So it's like... And keep it thorough, like... Yeah, be know? a dude, man. Yeah. That, that's how, like, that's how you last. That's how, like, we have longevity because we're just dudes. It's like, that's my dude. He, he's not going to act any differently to me than he would to you, you know? And it's like... If this guy does something, I can stand behind it. Like, if one of my crewmates do something, most of them, like, I can stand behind it. And it's like, you know, if, if, if I react a certain way... That's from the heart. Like, that's how I feel. I don't fucking sit at home and try to come up with some sort of alternate plan yeah. on how I'm going to screw this guy over. Or I don't say rumors about people to try and make them look bad when it's not true. You know what I mean? Like, if I say something, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. And if you want to approach me on that, then we can figure it out. But, uh, <laughs> but, but it's thorough. Keeping it a hundred, like keeping it thorough at all times, and that's with our crew. Is I think we keep it so real with each other that that's why we're still around. And you watch them go to other cities and get recognition because of the work that they put in. Like they don't owe you anything. No. But it's cool to see that that you had an impact on what they uh, on on the outcome that they that they've created, right? They're not out there riding our respect. They're earning their own. And when they do things like that, it's like, that's my fucking son. Like, I'm so proud of him, you know? Like, I raised him to act that way. And to see them do good in life. Like, seeing yeah. them fucking, you know, seeing them doing successful business, seeing them fucking, you know, being quality people. Like, that shit's cool too, you know? And ruthless. Seeing them just go get fucking wild and crazy and being like the fucking craziest party animals you can see you're like fuck yeah you guys are fucking awesome but then still go home and like help their dad build a deck or or yeah no like to pay you know? their fucking bills and to not be couch surfing and living like degenerates you know yeah, you're like yeah. but they're still acting like shitheads i appreciate that you know yeah. like, there's a great balance